Hello everybody, I'm the Wasteland Viking, and welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. Now, last time, we have encountered, briefly, Dr. Holmes and some of his, um, patients, I guess you could call them. Um, and we have learned that he's using his, this hospital as kind of like a very illegal chop shop. Dr. Holmes, another intercom crackles at your el- Crackles at your elbow. Okay, one solid blow would offer a few moments of blessed silence, but this is also a rare chance to get a word in on the good doctor, who greets you with more of his chittering laughter. You are a persistent one, a fine specimen indeed. Um, Why don't we settle this face to face? Yeah. Few friends for a face such as mine. Yeah, no kidding. Okay. Um, though I have one associate, I would be happy to introduce you to. Pitizel, subdue them. Pitizel? Pitzel? I don't. Anyway, full cover. Is the best cover. The hell is that? Is that the troll? Yeah, that's the one troll that's been helping out with stuff. Alright. Let's get our guys like all the way up. We can go here. He has a slashing attack. Alright. That's gonna be interesting to deal with. Missed. Alright. It's not the Robo Dog. I think I figured out the Robo Dog. Pretty much you. It comes with preloaded, like, uh med packs and things like that, so you have, so you take it to somebody and register those to set, uh, target, I guess. Shoot. Doing decent damage to him, actually, I'm surprised. Just good. Alright. I'm not very good with my rifle, but, yeah, 70% only that close, that's not very good, but, man. Shot him, that's good. Spells, what can you do? You can blind him. Yep. Oh, I don't have line of sight, so I don't think I can do it. Alright, move here. There we go. doing pretty good damage to him. <clears throat> we can start taking care of these surgeons, I guess. Reload. For some reason, he can't see him. Line of sight blocked. Alright, well, I wasted a turn. There we go. SMGs aren't the most uh, bullet economical weapons. They do a decent amount of damage, but still. Oh, there he is. Can't you do anything right? Pitizel? How do you say that? I have dyslexia, so I first read that as pretzel. <laughs> so, I'm like, what the hell? Why would you call a troll pretzel? But, who knows. Yeah, let's start shooting these guys out. Let's use the drone actually go to Mr. Holmes. We're close to anyway. I like having him chase down some key targets. 86. It's not very good. Got him though. Let's do a uh, flamethrower. 
on Mr. Troll here. He resisted that damage quite a bit. Oh, he gets three freaking action points. There you go, he's getting there. You can cut him up. Sweet. I wonder if that was like a... Uh, do you have anything better? What are your skills like, dude? Let's see. Uh, you're okay with pistol, actually. Better with the SMG, but I'm alright with having you stick with pistols because, man, they're not very, like I said, economically sound. None of their guys are helping. None of his guys are helping him out with uh, accuracy and things like that. Mystery to me. I keep forgetting he can actually hold down right click and do stuff. Um. not even cover at all. Could move him here. Oh, I'm sorry for my voice last time. I was uh, having a rough week. So I kind of didn't feel like recording, but I wanted to get some done and kind of get something uploaded because I haven't been doing a lot of uploading the past couple weeks either. It's just been... Very strange, I guess you could say. But I'm back. Drone. Also, right now it's been somewhat difficult for me to find a good recording uploading schedule anyway. Because of life at home, it's been difficult to actually get a time to just sit down and do whatever I want, you know, with doing what I want when I want to, it's, it's complicated. Alright. Well, it sounds like he doesn't have any weapons at all. It's a 49% shot, that's not even worth it. Let's start moving up here. Like I said, he doesn't have a weapon, so not going into cover is not a huge deal for me. Alright, um... Line of sight blocked. Just move you here. I don't know how the hell you missed that. Really? I'm right next to you, and that's a 57% chance. That's... Makes absolutely no sense at all. So I mean like literally two movements away from him and I am very like 80%. That's weird. So I mean it doesn't look like we killed the good doctor, but we can talk to him. Holmes drops to the ground, the light in his eyes fading fast, but something keeps the shriveling husk of his soul stuck to his mortal coil for a few moments more. This is a place of broken things. I remake them. She. She asked me to remake her. He manages one more laugh. His, gla his glazed eyes 
rolling toward a workbench across the way. She was playing both of us. Huh? Okay. <clears throat> One action point. Your experience has increased your ability to operate in dangerous situations. Wow. Nice. Also, I've got eight um, karma points I need to spend. Then, with a final bloody whipper, the Emerald City Ripper breathes his last breath. Okay. Um. Neato. I think. Uh, let's spend some of that karma. 16. Actually, we gained 8 from that. So, yeah, we've got a lot. Alright, yeah. So, we've got 3 action points now. God, I don't even know where to put these in. Uh, probably range combat. Make our rifle just a bit better. As far as intelligence goes, biotech would be good because that increases our... Well, it increases the amount of points, uh, hit points recovered when using a med kit. Which is good. But, uh... We also just raise our intelligence decently high. That would only leave us with two points. So I'm thinking of body, maybe? But actually, body at this point isn't really a huge deal because I'm in cover a lot of the time. In the back while I'm having my drones do my work, pretty much. So we could, let's just increase intelligence, actually. Won't leave us much left. But we'll be able to obviously save that up and make stuff better. Maximum for trolls. Okay, that's fine. So get, get this closer to using Class S drones. Uh, this one will get us plus one action point bonus. Alright, cool. Accuracy, more dodging, and more AP. Wow. Yeah, let's do... Yeah, let's confirm that. That's pretty good use, I think, for our spendage of our points. <clears throat> um, under who's sitting in these septic tanks. Alright, yeah, let's look at this. Holmes' workbench falls somewhere between coroner slab and medieval torture device. It is decorated in the many colors of death and littered with the instruments of that trade. To one side there is a leather-bound journal stuffed with uneven pages. To the other is a hawk sack. It's small green still it's small green still glowing. <clears throat> Beneath the bench is a rolled sheaf of paper. Is a rolled sheaf of papers uh, held closed with a tied length of surgical tubing. Okay. Uh, let's skip the journal first. Leafing through the pages, you find few in intelligible entries. Holmes may not have been a real doctor, but his handwriting certainly fits the stereotype. Stuffed in the last few pages is a copy of a disinter disinterment order. Uh, from a local cemetery with the grave's occupant marked as Melinda Watts. Well, Watts' last name is very familiar to us. Me coming back to this, um, I actually know who that is, but um, I don't think her first name was ever mentioned. So, we'll have to see who that is. Um, access the pocket secretary? Holmes is still logged in, granting you access to his currently loaded files. Prominent among them is a hospital report from a donor program. It lists the organs beside the names and vital statistics of the recipients. Your eye catches Sam Watts' name besides the entry of liver. Also on the list are the Ripper's other known victims, along with several others who may have shared in the same fate. So obviously he's been doing this business way before Sam even contacted us, contacted us via the Dead Man Switch. Um, obviously because it wasn't related to us until Sam Watts, you know, 
Sam had his thing, hap thing happen. Ooh, we received 4,500 new in. All right, uh, examine the rolled sheet of paper. In furling the large sheet of paper, you discover a diagram of the human female form, rendered to an impressive level of detail. It appears to be the blueprint for making Holmes' very own monster. All right. So let's invest investigate the workbench. The bench has clearly played host to numerous bodies over its lifetime. It includes limb restraints as well as skeletal traction mechanisms. At this table, uh, Holmes likely dismembered bodies or quite possibly put them back together. The tackiness of the blood suggests it has been used relatively recently. Alright, let's leave the workbench. Well, I, I'm kind of digging this little bit right here. It kind of looks like a... I mean, it's not a pentagram, but it's got a ritualistic kind of altar on it, pretty much. Alright. Well, it seems like we're going to be meeting this certain person next. Who the hell are you guys? His chip slot is still fresh. The open wound, pink and wet and lurid. His voice drips innuendo, but his eyes say nobody's home. Well, hello there. Did you come to play? Bin Raku? Huh. I'm not in the mood for games. Are you okay? Are you okay? How long have you been here? Of course we're okay. We're ready for a little party. You you want to have a little party? Play party with me? By your name? Yeah, these are obviously uh, AI programmed now, so they've got like certain just names or things like that. She's assembled in a standard config face of a schoolgirl body of a stripper you'd never you'd need some thick beer goggles to miss the work huh <laughs> she's had she's had done wow okay so I was kind of right with how what he's been using these four I'm also I'm sure it's a mix of also like maybe assistance of other kinds persona fix chip wave uh, wiper What's that about? Oh, right. It's a uh, mission item, maybe? Let's look. Yeah, it is. Can it be used to clear out the active memory of a SimSense personifix chip? So can we go to them and wipe their minds or something like that. Use the chip eraser on the Benraku. <clears throat> Erase her home's programming. Yes. His eyes focus and his hand raises slowly to touch his head wound. The fingers come away wet and sticky. Panic uh, twitches at the corners of his mouth as he surveys the room. First you, then the girl, then down to his own body which is no longer his. Sweet Jesus, what did he do? What am I? He begins weeping, his body racked in a great inconsolable heavy sob heavy sob sobs, excuse me. Well, that's what y'all get for that's with Dr. Holmes. I don't know, I mean like besides Well for his quote unquote patience, is it like he bribes them with, like, you know, the advertisement of, oh, do you want a better life? You know, this and that, that, like, the perfect cure kind of thing. And then he brings them into this and wipes their mind and puts an AI chip in it and give them a whole new life that they, like, wanted but they didn't want it like this kind of thing. And then he goes and you know, drugs and murders people for parts and then gives it to them kind of thing to make, like, the perfect person. I don't know, that's my current theory. Uh, you're about to transition to no lo new location, continue? Yes. So we have obviously leveled up our intelligence and our quickness for our weapons.
Loose ends. The ride back to the seamstress's union is quite is quiet compared to the pan pandemonium left behind at Mercy Mental Hospital. Lone Star Squad cars pass you on the road, sirens blaring. No doubt in response to the aftermath of your showdown in the late Dr. Henry Holmes. Oh, with the late Dr. Henry Holmes. The Emerald City Ripper. The man who violently repossessed the internal organs of Sam and Jessica's mother, Melinda Watts. Yeah, so Melinda Watts wanted these body parts. Um, and although the killer is dead and his grip on the city is broken, it's clear he hasn't he wasn't working alone. There are loose ends aching to be tied. The taxi turns out Redmond Way, cruising past now familiar landmarks until the se until the seamstress's union, in all its decadent, seedy glory, materializes between sweeps swipes of its own overworked wind windshield wipers. Time to evaluate your next move. Ooh. So <clears throat> I'm not sure what is going to be the next move. I mean, like, obviously the next move would be finding out where Melinda is at. Um, and it's interesting because she was at the very, well, at the very beginning, if you guys remember, uh, oh, what is it? McCluskey, um, was talking about how Sam's mother committed suicide. So, and then the coroner, I don't, oh, what was his name? Dresden, I think? Dresden, the dwarf uh, coroner, he didn't, uh, he didn't put it on the report that she committed suicide, but that's what the official report said. So I'm wondering, well, obviously somebody pulled her body out of the morgue. Um, but, I don't know, I'm guessing that it was a staged kind of thing. And she wanted to have, like, now the perfect body because now she could be a new person that, now that everybody thinks that she's dead, kind of thing, you know? That's my work in theory. Anyway, right now. The union is quiet this afternoon. The salary men and wage slaves haven't migrated from nearby offices and suburbs to dabble in the exotic yet. Alright. So I guess we talk to Johnny Clean here. There he is. Johnny Clean is talking with Cherry Bomb and Mrs. Kubota when you walk in, or when you walk up. We were just talking about you, Travoke. And the Emerald City Ripper. Ironic that you tracked a serial killer to a mental hospital. Indeed. Ah, uh, see. Oh well. Johnny Clean told us where you were going, Ome. We have been waiting for you to return. Um. Seemed pretty interested, waiting to hear the latest dirt. Why were you waiting? One killer more or less in a place like this. What's the difference? Oh, uh, waiting to hear the latest dirt? Hey, that's not fair. I'm not looking for dirt. I kind of liked Sam. Sure, he creeped on me once in a while, but he had a big heart. He had a good heart. I miss him sitting at the end of the bar and telling jokes. I'm sure everybody does. We each have our reasons for wanting the killer found. Sam was a regular here and his loss has been felt, regardless of his shortcomings. The whole sprawl has been shaken by these killings as well. The randomness of them, no one knows if they will be next or what the killer might take from them. I admit that the killings have hampered business as well. I'm sorry, but it is true. It does not help that Sam's body was found down the street from here. Even my regular customers have been loath to venture out with with a killer on the loose. Now tell us, Ome, did you find the person responsible for the Ripper murders? The person responsible? No, the killer? Yes. Uh, not exactly. I got the bastard who wielded the scalpel, but whoever's... Ooh, pulling the strings is still out there. I'll go with the first one. I don't understand why are you saying the killer wasn't responsible for his own actions. <clears throat> this sounds more complicated than I expected. It is the head of the asylum was killing specific people to harvest spe specific body parts. All the transplanted organs 
Same from the came from the same donor, Belinda Watts, Sam's mother. It looked like he was putting her back together. Oh yeah, the whole thing was a Frankenstein job. The Ripper was harvesting body parts to resemble Sam's mom, uh, mother, Melinda. All the victims had transplanted organs, her organs, and the Ripper was taking them back. So... Okay, yeah. I'll go with the first one. It was It's a bit more detailed and to the point. The three are silent as the news sinks in. So... Sam had an organ transplanted from his mother, and then the Ripper killed Sam and all those other people just to reassemble Sam's mother? <clears throat> yeah, that's about the size of it. I sense a cause and effect in this. Coyote and Jake Armitage uh, just left here to attend Sam's funeral. I'm told that there will be a re-enterment uh, ceremony for his mother as well. Um... His sister invited me to the funeral. I'll, I will go, because, you know, obviously he's a friend. <clears throat> That's interesting. Right, a re interment ceremony. Interesting. Sounds like she'll be buried with all her missing body parts. sister invited me to the funeral and then, then I met her here. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that. Think his sister Jessica had something to do with it? Um, honestly, I don't think so because, I mean, like, she wasn't completely distraught when she found out that Sam was dead. But at the same time, it seemed, you could tell that she cared about him, kind of. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hang on, I saw Sam's sister when she was here the other day. She was as corp as they come, but I can't imagine a lady like that behind a series of murders. There's got to be something else going on. It is clear that you must go to the funeral and talk with Jessica Watts, Trevok. Um, that's where I was headed, Mrs. Kubota. And I need to pay my respects to Sam. Of course. Raises her hand and the conversation stops. Wait, before you go, there's one thing you need to tell us, Travok. Where's the Emerald City Ripper now? Uh, decomposing. She nods in satisfaction. Hey, that is good. Alright. Plan your next move. Go to the Watts funeral and plan your next move. Alright. All right, well, I think I'm going to leave the episode here. <clears throat> Short and sweet as they come, and my earlier episodes, I recorded an hour long and just spliced them in half. But with editing and stuff, it's actually a lot... It's not harder to do that, but it's been starting to become easier to just make, or make shorter episodes and sometimes longer than a half hour and just, you know, kind of end it there in between segments. Which I was originally planning on doing, but I had more time to sit and actually record. But nowadays it's a little choppy, so it's more difficult. But I hope you enjoyed that. We have um, found a bit more information about actually who the real... Well, the Emerald City Ripper is dead, yes. I think. I mean, for all I know, somebody could bring him back and you know put him back together and put a chip in him and all of a sudden he's alive. I don't fucking know. But, like, he's... <clears throat> he's dead that we know of, but uh, it sounds like Sam's and Jessica's mom is now in this whole big picture of things. Obviously, it's deeper than we thought it was, but we'll leave that for next time. And please like uh, and subscribe. That'll help me out a lot, help out the channel. And also uh, leave down some comments for tips and suggestions or just fun little talking about this game if you would like. Um, and yeah, until then, I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.